Okay, so it's now time to work on storing the student's record. So for that, let's start by adding a button. So clicking on that button will open up a new slide of a component and that and in there, we are gonna define, populate the page with the form and all the other stuff. So let's start by creating a new button. So inside the index.plate, so here we wanna display that button. So above the explate table, what I want to do is, okay, let's start by first checking out the documentation. So here we have some components defined for us. So one of them is link component. So we can pass in a lot of stuff to these. So, okay, so what I want to do here is, okay, we can actually simply define a link component and the auto-generated code looks good. Let's see how it looks like in design okay this looks pretty bad so what i want to do is instead of passing in these classes i'm going to pass in my own custom uh tilde classes so you can check them out later and okay what this is actually doing is it is passing in an a tag so instead of that we can define these classes in the link component itself so maybe that's the reason why the design looked so bad so let's go ahead and pass in that class attribute and let's reload. Okay, now it looks a bit better. Let's also add in a margin, bottom of five. Okay, this design is not reloading. Okay, now it looks good. So, so when we click on this link, what we wanna do is we wanna open up our slide over model and in there we are gonna display the form. So for that, what we can do is we can pass in an attribute called slide over and okay, we have that somewhere in here i guess preloaded content okay we don't have that okay let's go ahead and search for it slide over explain model component okay okay yeah we can pass in the slide over to this and then this will open up as a slide over component so let's go ahead and paste that and we haven't defined the view so on clicking on on going to this route what you want to do is we want to display a new view so let's go ahead and define a new view inside the students so i'm gonna name it create dot blade dot php and what do we want to do in here okay we need to return that view from the controller so let's go ahead and define that create method and let's return that view students.create and let's see what do we have inside view okay we don't have anything so let's see how this looks like and then we'll work on other stuff okay this doesn't actually display anything let's see the console whether we have any errors okay we don't have anything so the page is empty so for that reason we are not seeing anything so let's go ahead and populate this form so for that, what I am going to do is I'm going to add some form fields. So let's go ahead and check out the form components. Okay, not form components actually, but okay, we have the form in here. So explain form action is going to be this. Okay, let's go ahead and okay, so we have a form components page in here. So that's inside. Oh yeah, we have a dedicated page actually. I didn't see that. So we can use the form components to define our form. So by default, it comes with checkbox, file, group, input, radio, select, submit, and text area. So let's go ahead and copy this thing and we can customize this as per our needs. So let's go ahead and paste that. Explain form, input, one is gonna be name. So let me also copy this thing and I want one for the name. Let's also update the placeholder or label and the one is going to be email let's also pass in the type i think we can pass type attribute explain input name okay we don't need this we also have one for phone number so let's also go ahead and define that and by the way we also have an avatar form field so we'll uh, deal with that later for now i only want to uh, give you an overview of the form component and later we'll deal with the file uploading files and all the other stuff so okay we have phone number we have okay the type is gonna be okay let's keep it as text because we can also have the plus and all the other symbols for numbers so the name is gonna be phone number okay let's see we can also pass in the actions for this 
so we'll look into that in a while but let's start by checking out the design how it looks like so let's click on create and we don't see anything what could be the issue in here we don't have any problems in here but okay let's see in the index let's go into the students or create okay i think we should reload it once let's click on create and we don't see anything okay so i did a bit of research and to display the content inside the in the slide over what we need to do is we need to wrap that inside a modal component so what i am going to do is i'll just copy this code and wrap that in our model so we only have a simple form so we need to wrap that inside the splayed model component so let's go ahead and define that closing tag and let's see if this thing works and we'll fix the issues accordingly okay let's click on create and as you can see now we have that model component displayed so let's also go ahead and add in some classes for the margin so the class is gonna be margin top of five let's go ahead and test it out once again and okay this looks good so we have an h1 but still it doesn't look so good but i think that's fine we can define some classes for this so the design part i'm not gonna look into it so much it's all up to you how you want to design it i just wanted to give you a brief overview okay okay that looks good yeah i won't be working with the design part so much and since uh, it all since play also comes with the built-in components design and tailwind so you don't have to design uh, much of the stuff yourself okay so let's start by defining the actions and let's actually implement the storing part so for that what we can do is inside the form component we can pass in an action so this thing is covered inside the form component in the component section so here we can pass in an action so let's go ahead and do that so explain model the action is gonna be okay maybe we can pass in the blade components so route students dot store and let's also work on validation part so inside student controller we want to implement some validation so let's go ahead and define a new request call store student request and let's go ahead and import that here and let's define some validations so the validation that i saw the authorization what i'm going to do is i'm just going to implement a simple auth here so that any unauthenticated users cannot make or store the data and for the validation rules we have a simple name which is required string and max 225 we also have email so the validations are required string email max 255 you need to students that that's good we also have phone number okay and okay we also have class id and section ids right so maybe we should also work on that so for now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna implement it in a simple way so we might look into the implementing the dependent drop downs and all the other stuff later but in this video i'm gonna implement it in a simple way so let's go ahead and do that so what we want to achieve here is while creating the student data okay this action is unauthorized maybe we haven't saved that so let's go ahead and now create the student and we should see the form and this thing is lagging okay so i actually implemented this in the create method so this should be in the store method actually okay so now let's go ahead and display and see whether the form is displayed okay so what i want to do here is beside these forms i also want to display a select component which is going to display the class and section and the user can select any of the value and then create the student data but let's also add in some margins in here in the form or okay, create form let's add in some classes margin bottom of five okay this looks a bit better so we also have a select component so let's go ahead and define that select where's that okay here it is so x split select the name is can be defined and also we can pass in the options 
so what i am gonna do is we can also pass in the values as slots so i'm gonna do this actually and let me just copy this code and paste that in here the name is gonna be section id and later we'll grab the class id for this section as well and the options let's loop over the options so for each sections as section what i want to do here is i want to display an option with a value of section id and the label is going to be section class name and then dash section name so we don't have these values in here so we need to pass that from the controller so in the student controller let's go ahead and do that so sections is gonna be section with class get and let's pass in okay we also need to import that and let's pass the sections data okay let's test this out create student and okay we can see the students data displayed in here so what i also want to do is i want to display a select a section label on top of this so a default value so the value is going to be empty but if you want to display a select a section kind of placeholder so that this would be selected by default so let's go ahead and what do you say okay selected so let's test this out and now we can select any of the sections so class one section a let's also provide some spacing in here and this should look good now okay let's define that in a new line and okay now what we can do is inside the section id we can also validate the section id so required exist in the sections table so the validation are going to be applied automatically so let's go ahead and try to create a new student and as you can see if there are any validation errors then they are applied automatically so that's really good so what else do we have in here okay let's implement the store part so student is gonna be student create maybe we can use the request validated part but what we also want to do here is we also need to store the we also want to store the class id okay so we can actually do is we can merge two of the values so instead of section id what i want to do is i want to display i want to store the class id and the class id is going to come from request okay we also we need to grab the section first so let's get this section from the database so section find the field request section id and the class id is going to be from the section id sections class id so let's return redirect route to students.index with a message of student created successfully and okay we haven't looked into toast for now so we'll be looking at that later so we are just keeping this for now and that will be applied automatically later so let's go ahead and test this thing and we'll fix any issues we face so let's add some data some mail at the rate gmail.com section is class one section a let's click on submit and we are redirected to the index page so we do have 101 results so this means that our data was stored successfully so let's okay we already have reached the last page and as you can see the data that we added has been stored successfully to the database so that's it for this video and in the next part we will be looking at editing the data so we'll be on click on edit when the user clicks on the edit button then we'll open the slide over form and then we'll also populate the data for that specific record so let's go ahead and do that